inside your head. You really cannot catch them or find their whereabouts. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The mixer. Masia, why are we going to the dishwasher again? We have a busy day ahead of us, and we all need to be charged up with energy. I don't like charging myself up in the dishwasher. Then how about the microwave, Nolik? Or the kettle? No thanks! I don't like it when we go inside anything at all in that kitchen. There's not one interesting thing in there. And where's it interesting, huh? In the computer! Masia, will you let me get charged up in the computer? The energy there is sweeter. Our diet has to be nutritious, Nolik, not just delicious. People don't eat just candy, do they? Humans get energy from food, while the Fixies get their energy from appliances. Humans eat all sorts of foods, and so do Fixies. They need the energy that comes from different devices. Getting charged up in a car makes a Fixie faster. In a computer, smarter. And in a clock, more accurate. To get a balanced energy diet, Fixies mustn't stay inside of one place all the time like a television. It's healthier for us to move from one device to another. Good morning, Tom Thomas. Ugh. What's the matter? For breakfast, I got cereal with milk. Mom says that milk is so healthy, but I think it's just awful. Aha, Nolik, there you are. Go get charged right now. I'm not going. Look at Tom Thomas. He doesn't want to have breakfast either. Why don't you? Milk tastes awful to him. Tastes awful? He just doesn't know how to drink it right. Look what we've got here. What? What? A mixer. A mixer is a kitchen appliance that's used to mix together different foods. With a mixer, you can make things like frosting, sauces, or an omelet. But the most delicious thing you can make with a mixer is a milkshake. It's easy. Just put some fruit, syrup, juice, ice cream, or anything else you'd like into a container and then add milk. Now use the mixer to stir it all up until it's smooth and creamy. And that's it. You've got yourself a milkshake. <sighs> Guys, what do we have for a milkshake? We've got a jar of jelly. Will it work? That'll work. And strawberry jam? That'll be great. Here's a banana. I found some chocolate, too! And I found strawberry ice cream. Start up the mixer. When you get up from your bed, yo. When you get up from your bed. Open your favorite cereal when your day is ahead. Open your favorite cereal. Make one more shake, just one. They were good. Sure, if you want to. Oh, where did all the milk go? Way to go. Looks like you drank all of it. And I remember when you said how milk is awful. 
I didn't know how to drink it right. Simka, what in the world were you up to? And what happened to Nolik? Shh. Just come, I'll show you. Nolik, here you are. Didn't you say that charging up in the kitchen is boring for you? The mixer's not boring. It gives you energy that's yummy, delicious, and nutritious. The nightlight. They're very close. I can feel them. That's all. You've had enough monsters. It's not good to watch these kinds of movies before bed. Mom, Mom, really, I'm not scared. Let me watch the end, would you? I told you, that's all. Well, good night, honey. Close. I feel them. <sighs> Can you believe it? He's sleeping, and he didn't turn the light off. Yeah, and so? And so, if every human went to sleep with a light on, there wouldn't be enough electricity to go around. Hup! Everyone can probably remember walking into an empty room with the lights turned on. Or finding a TV on that nobody's watching. One little light or TV might not seem like much, but just imagine how many people are living on this Earth. Well, if everybody forgot to turn off the lights or TV when they weren't being used, the amount of wasted electricity would equal the amount of energy produced by a hundred power plants. And each of these power plants needs freight cars of coal or rivers of oil to keep running. And all that fuel has to be extracted and burned constantly. Now do you see how expensive burning a light bulb is for the Earth? So don't forget to turn off electrical appliances when you're not using them. It's so easy. Uh, who turned off the light? I feel them. I feel them. I feel them. I... Look! What's up with him? I think he's playing sleep hockey. Looks like his position is left out. Ha ha. Anyway, he should get a penalty for wasting electricity. <gasps> Monsters! <laughs> hey! What do you think we are? Hockey pucks? Nolik, Simka, forgive me. Who did you think we were? Mm, monsters. Huh. Well, I see how you could mistake Simka for one, but obviously not me. <laughs> Tom Thomas, what are you doing? Why are you sleeping with the light on? I was so dumb. I watched this monster movie on TV before bed. Now I'm scared to sleep without the light on. And that dumb old monster flick, why were you watching it? I felt like getting scared. Ah! You're great at getting scared. Keep quiet, or we'll wake up your mom and dad. How am I going to fall asleep now? Here's a good idea. You can use a nightlight. A nightlight is a little light that humans who don't like to sleep in the dark use in their rooms. The nightlight has a dim glow. That's because it works with a special kind of light bulb that uses very little electricity. These kinds of light bulbs are called energy efficient. <laughs> That's hard to say. <laughs> and you can find night lights that use such low energy bulbs that they can work off of a battery. B 
But you know there isn't a night light here. Huh. How would you get by without us? Tonight, I'm here to help you. I'm gonna be your night light. Look, right there. There's our lampshade. Thanks so much. You really are a friend indeed, Nolik. It was easy. Just go to sleep. Nolik, <sighs> do you know any good stories? I know one about a big meat grinder. Nah, no way. You'd better tell me a story about a nice kind fixie. Ah, I know a good one. And here's how it goes. Grandpoos was working inside of a very big clock. Actually, the clock wasn't that big. And I'm not sure if it was Grandpoos, but it was a clock, I think. The antenna. Wow, is this cool or what? Ah, hello there, little fixies. Did you come to see what I'm working on? <laughs> Professor Eugenius, tell us what you're planning on doing with this huge thing. Well, I hope to use this fantastic device to make contact with aliens. Since ancient times, people have wondered, is there life on other planets? What might aliens from outer space look like? And what kind of spaceships do they travel in? There are some people who say that they've seen alien spaceships and that they look like flying saucers. There are even some people who say they've actually made contact with aliens. But personally, I'm sure it's just their fantasy. And science hasn't been able to prove any of these stories either. The one story that makes me laugh harder than all of the rest comes from a guy who claims that he saw aliens with his own eyes. Can you believe it? He said that there was a group of tiny aliens that looked like humans with glowing hair. It seems to me that this guy just happened to spot a few fixies who weren't able to hide from him in time. <laughs> It's ready. If I could talk and now what? The if the aliens are out there flying by the Earth, they'll see this plate get hungry and come for food? <laughs> aliens don't need a plate like this, silly, when they've got plates that fly, flying saucers. You're both silly. This thing isn't a plate at all. It's an antenna. Antenna? Antennas help people receive radio signals. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, like this, this, or this, to pick up a signal that's very weak. Powerful antennas that are shaped like large dishes work the best of all. When radio waves hit the dish, the waves all bounce off of it and gather together into one point. This makes the signal stronger and clearer. The most powerful dish antennas can even pick up signals from outer space. No, look, stop! You'll burn yourself! Don't treat me like a baby boy, okay? Ah, interesting. I wonder what's inside of there, do you know? Why don't we go and take a look? <laughs> I was only trying to help him out. No need, Nolik. The soldering iron is way too hot, and I'm practically all done here. Ta -ta. Then let's start looking for those aliens in outer space. <laughs> Just one second, Nolik. Now, uh-huh. <laughs> See if we can pick up signals from outer space. What do you think? Is it night right now? Where the aliens live? What if they're sleeping? Quit bothering the professor with your nonsense. Let us out right now! Can't you hear us? Please let us out! I'm afraid there's no way they can hear us from this far away. Uh, I can't hear any signals. It just sounds like static. Be patient, you guys, and keep listening. Digit, we all know how clever you are. Can't you think of a way out of here? I think I got it, Tula. You stay there. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. I'll use a special code I know to send a signal that we're in trouble. Mm. Wait a second. Do you hear that? Could it be a signal from the alien? Hooray! 
This is sensational. It means that somewhere in the cosmos are intelligent forms of life. Three dots, three dashes, three dots. Ooh, it's Morse code. It's a signal for help that they're sending. You don't think the aliens are in trouble, do you? Yeah, I think so. And who do you think they learned Morse code from out there? Yeah, that's strange. There are hardly any fixies that know that code. Digit does. Ah, oh. and where is he, you know? And where's Tula? Well, well, I think I know exactly with which aliens we made contact. I think I know it too, Professor. Lower the antenna. Greetings to you, oh extraterrestrial visitors. Hi there. <laughs> it's good to be back. Uh, oh. Uh, what a shame. I was really hoping that we'd find intelligent life forms out there. It's all right. <laughs> At least we found two unintelligent ones. <laughs> <laughs> the microphone. And what do you think? Should we go and see a movie? <sighs> movie! <sighs> hey, you didn't type everything that I said. You should listen more carefully. And you should try using less words. <gasps> Nolik, hey. Alia, what are you arguing about? Uh, well, I was writing a letter to Johnny. I was, not you. I messed up my finger and Nolik offered to help me. I had no idea that you're such a yapper. Oh. Now I see. Tom Thomas. <laughs> Didn't you know that you can call Johnny straight from your computer? You sure? You see that picture of the phone? Just click on it. Hi. So what movie do you want to go see? Hey there. I don't care. Just not pirates and those robots. Hey, Tom Thomas, why aren't you answering me? I am answering you. Hello? Hello? Talking to the microphone. Uh, I don't have a microphone. There you go. End of conversation. All right, then talk right into there. Simka, come on. You use headphones to listen. It's a joke. It's no joke. We talk into microphones and listen through headphones. But both of these devices use a special membrane to do their job. The membrane inside of a microphone is used to capture sound that is then sent through wires as an electrical signal. And inside a pair of headphones, a membrane helps turn that electrical signal back into sound. So it turns out that a microphone and headphones are built in a very similar way, even though they are used quite differently. And so I talk right into here? Johnny, hello? Just wait a second. First, we need to plug your headphones into the hole where the microphone gets plugged in. Ah, I get it. Go ahead. Now it's a microphone. Johnny, I'm here. Can you hear? Yeah, he can hear, but you can't. Nolik, switch it over to the headphone jack. I already saw a robot. And I already saw it. No, Lick! I don't think there's anyone who didn't see it. You didn't see it? Then let's go see it. No, I don't wanna. I think the robots will be even more boring than the pirates. Do you wanna see the pirates? Make up your mind. Do you want to see the pirates or the robots? I don't want to see either one. Nolik, what are you doing? What am I doing? It's because you and Johnny don't listen to each other. I've got a good idea. You need to talk like police on their walkie-talkies. When they're done talking and they're ready for an answer, they say, over. Great idea. When we talk to someone using the telephone, there are two channels for the sound. We talk through the first channel and listen to the other person talking through the second one. But sometimes two people need to talk to each other using only one channel. For instance, sailors and taxi drivers use one channel radio sets. When a radio set's turned on, you can hear the other person talking, but they can't hear you talk unless you push a special button down. Then they'll hear you, but you won't hear them. 
So that means you have to take turns talking, because if everybody tries talking at once, nobody will understand anything. So then, to let people know that you're done talking, and you're ready to listen to what they have to say, say over. Johnny, hello. Why don't we try talking like police on their walkie-talkies? Whenever you're done talking, say to me, over, over. All right, so are we going to the movies? Over. Nah, I don't feel like it. Why don't we go play ball instead? Over. Sounds good. Who were you talking to before? Over. Uh... Uh, I can't tell you that. It's classified. And we policemen, we follow the rules. Wow, that worked out great. You two are the best. Over. Oops. <laughs> we try our best. Over. We do. Especially me. <sighs> I'm completely over. The string lights. We're almost all done. Yeah. Now Santa Claus is gonna come over. He'll say, one, two, three, lights light up the tree. Then we'll get our presents. The real Santa Claus? Yeah, for sure. The real Santa Claus will come to you? You'll see for yourself. He comes to me every year. OK, so let's practice. One, one two, two, three, three. Lights, lights light up the tree. Huh? Oh, the string lights burned out, and we don't have another one. Tom Thomas, Santa Claus is almost here. Is the tree ready? No, not quite yet. Oh, no, oh, no. What are we going to do? I'll be right back. Tom Thomas, what do you think? Will Santa Claus give you any presents if there aren't any lights on the tree? No way. It's not right without the light. It just wouldn't be magical. Papus, Masia. Santa Claus is about to come to Tom Thomas, but the string lights on the tree, they all burned out. They all burned out? Really? The bulbs in a string light are connected together like a chain with a piece of wire between each bulb. When you turn on a string light, electricity flows through the wire, lighting up each of the bulbs along its way. But if any of the bulbs gets burned out, the circuit will be broken and the electricity will stop flowing. That means one bad bulb will make all of the lights go out. So if you want to fix a string light with a bad bulb, the answer is really simple. Just find the bad one and put a new one in. So do we have a spare bulb around here? I'll get it for you. I know where it is. Tom Thomas, hold up Santa Claus for a while. We need a little time to find and replace that bad light for you. I'll try to. Tom Thomas, Santa Claus is already here. Ho, ho, ho! I got one thing to do. So, let's find the bad bulb. OK, Papoose, let's go. Hmm, this one's working. Maybe this one burned out. Nope. And that? It lights fine. Santa Claus is getting very hot out here. Hold on. Simka, what's up? We checked all the bulbs, but couldn't find a bad one. Huh. I guess this year won't be magical. OK, Mom, just come on in. Ho, ho, ho. Hello there, Tom Thomas. So tell me now, have you been good all year? Huh, why aren't the lights on the tree burning? So then let's say it together. One, two, three. Ow! Papoose, I found one more bulb. Here's the one that's not working. One, one two, two, three. three. Light, light, light up, up the, the tree. tree. Huh. Now we need to replace this bulb with a new one. So where's Masia? Show your light, O oh tree. Hooray! Hooray! Ho, 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 ho. Whew, that was really hard. I see you already got it shining. 
But where did you manage to find a new bulb? We got Papus to act as the bulb. Tidish! Tidish! Ah, uh, what a hero. Pull me up so we can put this bulb in. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. Our spirits light up. Whoa! And on the tree. Ha-ha! <laughs> yeah! And on the tree. On Christmas ah, Eve, nice box. The lights go brighter. Mm -hmm. Every year when no one is expecting. From some place that no one could conceive. Appears a little miracle before us. Every year on Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve, on Christmas Eve, on Christmas Eve, on Christmas Eve. The clock it seems on Christmas Eve is ticking slower. And suddenly, on Christmas Eve, a miracle, on Christmas Eve, no one believes, on Christmas Eve, comes out of nowhere. Every year when no one is expecting, from some place that no one could conceive, yeah. a little miracle before Whoa. us. Every year on Christmas Eve, on Christmas Eve, the clock's tick. And when the Pied Piper began to play his magical <laughs> flute, the rats came out of their holes and followed him. And they never would be seen in Hamlin ever again. Whew. And then what? Huh? I can't read anymore. My legs got tired. Whew. Simka, Nolik, something's rustling in there. In where? In Dad's office. It's on his desk. It's inside the wooden container. Hmm. So maybe there's a mouse inside it. Tom Thomas, sit right here while Nolik and I go and check. And if there's a mouse in there for real, then how are we going to get it out? Those rodents are really so big. And why was I reading that book to you, huh? Just grab a flute, give it a toot, and the mice will scoot. And where are the flutes going to come from? We'll make them. Toot, 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 toot. You got it? <laughs> sure I did. Wait a second. Let's get a little closer. Like I told you, no more mice in there. So let's toot a little more so they won't go back in. All right. <gasps> so you're the ones messing around out here. Oh, Grampus, it's you here. All day I can't work on what I need to do. Right from the start, someone's opening up the top, and then you two tooting out. It was Simka who came up with the tooting. Just because you're afraid of mice. Wow, what kind of machine is this? Well, what do you think? A coffee grinder? Mm, no. A hole puncher? <laughs> mm, is it a foot scratcher? What? what? Well, a machine for scratching your feet. <laughs> You're joking all the time, you. It's a music box, and it's just wonderful. <laughs> music boxes were invented more than 200 years ago. Inside, there is usually a cylinder with short pins sticking up from it. In front of the cylinder, there is a comb with metal teeth of different lengths. If you pluck one of the teeth, it will make a pleasant sound. A short tooth makes a higher sound, and a long one, lower. When the cylinder spins around, the pins pluck the different teeth, and music plays. Awesome! So what's broken in here? The spring slipped off. It has to be pushed back into the right place. Will you help? There we go, that's better. How come the music's not playing? First, you have to wind up the spring with the key. Tideesh! I know who can wind up the spring. 
Well, Tom Thomas, can you guess what kind of machine this is? A paper cutter. Uh-uh. How about a hole puncher? <laughs> You're such a joker. Now don't go and tell me it's a foot scratcher. Then I don't know. Then wind it up with the key and you'll find out. Do you want to know how the higher and lower sounds come out? Put a regular ruler over the edge of a table. Hold down one end of the ruler and pluck on the other. The shorter you make the end hanging off the table, the higher the sound will be. The teeth inside of a music box work the same way. And bells work the same way, too. The smaller the bell, the higher it rings. The sound of a violin or a guitar depends on how thick the strings are. Fat strings make a lower sound, and thin strings, a higher one. How tight the string is also makes a difference. Take a piece of string or a rubber band, tie one end to a doorknob, and pull on the other end. With your free hand, pluck the string. The tighter the string gets stretched out, the higher the sound. If you want, you can even play a tune. I think I got it now. It's an old player for music. That's close, but not it. A music box is what they call it. I just said that. So what was it in there, hmm? Just a broken spring. It's not the thing I'm dying to know. Who was moving around there? All I'll say is we, Tom Thomas. Won't let that secret out. Shh. The solar battery. Let's see. Three times 648. He won't get it himself. Nope. Well, I bet he will. Tom Thomas is so smart. Yeah, smart, but lazy. I'll bet you a flick in the head. Then get ready. Huh? Shh. We promise. We can't bother him during homework time. I really wish I didn't have to write this out. Why write everything on paper when you got a calculator? I knew he'd say that. Without a calculator, he can't get it. It seems like the batteries are dead. Did you see that? The calculator won't turn on, so he's going to have to solve it by himself. What's the problem? Come on, where are the batteries here? <laughs> Suka, no, look. Just come out already. I can hear that you're here. Hi, Tom Thomas. Well, you can't figure out where the batteries need to go? <laughs> I don't get what's so funny. Because there are no batteries inside of this thing. What do you mean, no? Then where does the calculator, you know, get a... Where does it get electricity? Uh-huh. There's a solar battery in there. The sun turns it on? A long time ago, it was discovered by scientists that some materials produce electricity when light hits them. Sheets that are made out of these materials are called photoelectric cells. By connecting a few of these photoelectric cells together, you can build a solar battery. A solar battery in a calculator sits behind a small clear window. And when light hits the solar battery, it produces the electricity that powers the calculator. I don't see a little window anywhere on here. That's because you covered up the window with a sticker for some reason. The reason is that it looks great. Good job. It looks really great, but it can't work now. Well, farewell, sticker. I can't get it off. Then just leave it alone. Go ahead and solve the problems without the calculator. Then I'll be the one flicking you. Flicking who? Did you forget? We're the fixies, and we have to fix everything. Ah, Simka, that's a sneaky plan. It's not sneaky at all. You better find something to tear off the sticker with. Okay, how about them? take forever doing it this way. Yeah. I got an idea. Let's use this paper clip. And what's next? I'll just stick the end to the paper clip and then wrap it around. Tanish! 
with the help of solar batteries, we can produce electricity without burning any oil or coal. Unfortunately, these batteries aren't very powerful. A calculator can get enough energy from a small little battery. But in order to power a whole city with solar energy, you need to have power plants with huge fields full of solar batteries. And of course, it's best to build these plants where the sun shines bright and long, like out in the desert. By the way, in outer space, the sun shines very brightly, and it's never blocked by clouds. That's why all of the vehicles and satellites in space use solar energy for power, including the International Space Station, where astronauts from different countries work together. Tom Thomas! What, you guys all done? Uh-huh. Now you can go solve your problems on the calculator. But I already solved them on paper before you peeled off the sticker. Hooray! I'm the winner! Ow! That's totally unfair. If it wasn't for the sticker, you would have lost. What's going on? Nothing. Never mind. That's nothing to you? Well done, Tom Thomas. You got them all right. Now it's working. Look, a picture of our Nolik. Where? Where? Right there on the calculator. Oh, I got it. Zero means no, Nolik. <laughs> Good one. The electric kettle. That's four. Come on, Tom Thomas, just one more. Come on now, Tom Thomas. I know you can do it. Five. That doesn't count. That doesn't count. No, your chin was below the bar. Ooh, that's all. I can't do anymore. You weakling. You're the weakling. I'm not. I just haven't eaten in a while, and that's why I lost my strength. You're a slave to food, Tom. And you see, that's the difference between us fixies and you humans. Many people wrongly assume that the only way fixies could live is by stealing food off of humans' tables. Or worse yet, by stealing it from their refrigerators. That's just a lie. It's not true at all. Fixies don't eat any kind of human food. So then where in the world do the fixies get their energy, you're wondering? It's very simple. A fixie's entire life is connected with devices. Fixies not only live inside of devices, but they take care of them and help them live longer. And in return for their help, these devices share part of their energy with the fixies. So there you go. The fixies help devices, and devices help the fixies. Yes, we fixies and machines have a symbiotic relationship. So we don't eat leftovers like cockroaches, because we're fixies. One, two, three, whoa! How's it possible that a big boy like you doesn't know how to make any food for himself? I'm able to cook, but I'm not allowed to turn on the stove. What can you make without it? Oh, yes. We have instant oatmeal. Look. Do you like oatmeal? You're joking. Only my folks say oats are healthy and make you stronger. Great. Well, then how do you cook it? It's not hard. All you gotta do is add hot water. And I'm allowed to turn on the kettle. Stop and check if there's water in there. If there's none, you can burn out the kettle. It's got enough. Then you can turn it on. Hey, tell me, how does the kettle turn off? I mean, how does it know when the water's hot enough? Inside of an electric kettle, there's a heater hidden underneath its bottom. When you turn on the kettle, the heater warms up the water until it boils. And the boiling water gives off steam that heats up a special metal plate at the top of the kettle. The heat causes the metal plate to bend and that turns off the switch. So you could say that an electric kettle feels when the water's boiling. Okay, now I understand. Hey, why do you need three bowls? You don't need to make any oatmeal for us. It's not for you guys. It's for my mom and dad. Start out here. No! Keep pouring into this one. And I say pour it here. 
and I say first you should pour it into mine. Oh, Nolik, where are you? I'll find him. Hang on, I'm going in. Ah, Simka! She was right over here. Ah. <sighs> Nolik! Over here. Simka! Here. Nolik! There. Up there in the oatmeal. That must be your parents. Let's get out of here. Hey, and what about your shoe? Don't worry, I got another one. Hi, Tom Thomas, we're back. You must be hungry. We'll make you something to eat. But I already prepared us some food. And the water's already hot. Wash your hands. Tom Thomas, don't touch that kettle if it's hot. I don't want you to burn yourself. So today, we're eating oatmeal for dinner. Delicious. Uh, maybe you have something else? Why something else? You're the ones that say that oatmeal's great for you and that it makes us stronger. Well, yeah, that's what we say. I'm glad that our son pays such careful attention. Mmm, <laughs> isn't it delicious? Really? Huh, what's that? Oh, look, you found the boot, Dad. What? <laughs> uh, it's nothing. Just eat your food and don't get distracted. I'd like to see that oatmeal all gone, okay? And whoever doesn't finish won't get any candy. The stapler. Tom Thomas gets the ball. He makes an incredible move. He's wide open. He sees him and he screams in horror. He shoots and scores! Yay! Tish! Tom Thomas, stop kicking that ball. Your school concert starts in 30 minutes, and I don't want to iron your pants again. All right, Mom. Just one more time, huh? No, I'm sorry. Mom said I have to quit kicking the ball. But Mom said nothing about dribbling the ball. Go, you can Tom, do it. Tom, you can do it. it. Yeah. Go. Ah. Whoa! <gasps> Tom Thomas, your pants. This can't be! These are my special concert pants! Ugh. Yeah, how will you go now? Well, your mom does have enough time to sew them. I'm scared to even tell her about it. She said that I had to stop playing. Hey, I've got it! Here! You think we should fix the rip in his pants with a stapler? Yeah, isn't it a good idea? Oh, I gotta try it out. You do. Like this? Stop! Why? What's wrong? Eh, my nose itches. That's all. Let's go. You're right, Nolik. It works. That is super. Yeah, the stapler's really great. Do you guys know how it works? Just keep stapling and I'll tell you. The staples for a stapler are lightly glued together. That way you can load many staples at once, instead of one at a time. And a spring pushes the staples to the front. When you push down on the arm, a metal tooth pushes the front staple down through a thin space. And the staple punches holes in the paper. Next, the pointy ends of the staple push down onto a plate. And that makes the staple bend behind the paper. And there you go! The papers are fastened. So you could say that we're sewing, but using a stapler instead of a needle. Yeah, and it works even faster. Huh? What's going on? Could it have run out of staples? There's still a lot more staples, but one of them got jammed here in the slot. Ugh. Tom Thomas, we're leaving in 
five minutes. Okay, Mom. So, did you get it? No. <sighs> Why don't we get Papa's to help us? Because he's really strong and he's got a pack-a-mat. We can do this ourselves. Tom Thomas, find something we can use to push that staple out. The stapler is not a very new invention. It's been said that the French king, King Louis XV, had a stapler made out of gold and precious gems. Unfortunately, it could only hold one staple at a time. Modern staplers are much more convenient, and people have come up with so many kinds for paper, for plywood, and even for skin. Yes, surgeons often use them during operations. Then there's the staple gun that's used to upholster furniture. And its older brother, the nail gun, can even be used to hold together the walls of a building. And here's an invention almost as important as a stapler. It's the staple remover. With its help, it's possible to remove the staples put in by a stapler. How about the screwdriver? That'll work. Look, the screwdriver fits perfectly into the slot. Ah, that's great. Now push that staple through. Only keep your fingers out of the way, or you won't finish sewing. Tadish! It's still not Tadish. You haven't fixed your pants yet. That's it. They're done. Now we can say, Tadish! Tom Thomas, are you ready? Of course. My idea with the stapler was smart, wasn't it? And Tom Thomas's mother won't notice a thing. Will too. Just wait till she washes them. 